Hey, hey developers, my name is Eric and this video we're going to talk about Nux.js. We're going to talk about the differences between server middleware and normal middleware. And also we're going to take a quick look at async data as well. Uh, so if you guys don't know, my name is Eric. I am the author of the Vue.js in action book. I also have several years of software development experience. So make sure you stay all the way to the end. Uh, that really helps me out. And also I have some amazing courses. Udemy has these uh, $10, $11 sales. If you use my links below, um, it actually helps the channel out and you'll get those discounts. So just click any of those links below. I have some of my favorite courses. Click on it. If you buy it, buy it, I get a few bucks. That really helps me out. And those are all in the description. So here I went ahead and just created a real simple app for you. I just created the starter app and uh, and it I changed the name to test one, two, three. I have one route you can see here. You can see under the pages folder, I have one named Eric and I had I added a link. So it says, hello world, Eric. <laughs> and that's all it does, just really simple app. So I wanted to show you uh, a little bit about server side rendering. So in the documentation, if you look up Nux.js, uh, you can look here at nuxjs.org. It talks a little bit in the guide about you can see here, this little thing here, that there is views, routes, and there's async data, and there's middleware. So let's take a look at async data. So the idea is, is that since uh, the Nuxt, what they call it is a universal application, you can see here on the front page, it's called a universal Vue.js applications. And what that means is that it has all that neat server-side rendering stuff built into it. And what it's really doing is that there's a Node.js server that helps render the pages on the initial page load so it's quicker. So instead of like a normal single page application where all the JavaScript has to load first and then you have the first page appear, this one, it actually uses this Node server to load the page quicker because it just sends down the HTML, CSS first and then later the whole app and JavaScript gets loaded. But it also has some nice features where you can run code on the server side and the client side. So the first way to do that is something called async data. So I'm going to look in my Eric view here. And I'm going to add a script tag and close the script. And if I add something called async data, I can actually add in code here. You actually have something called something called the context. And this gives you the ability. So this gives you the ability to have access to a bunch of different things uh, on the app. So if I go here and I search for context, I can get some information about it. To see the context to look, you can look at the API essentials, and basically you get access to the app is client. You can see if it's a server route store, you have all these variables. And what happens is this async data actually loads before the component loads itself. So, and it loads on the server side and the client side. So you can see here, if I run console.log high here, and I look at this test run, and I actually have the server running, and I got an error because I need to do this. I need to export function, actually export default. And then I'll put this code in there. I'll refresh it. And you can see, I don't see anything here at the bottom. Um, let's see if you can see that. Yep, you can see it right here. It says app is up to date. I don't see anything in the console, but if I click on this link, this is inside the Eric. and I save it. You can see here it shows high down here. So it's actually loading this console dialog on the on the uh, con uh, client side. But if I look at here and here's my server running and I refresh it, you can see here now it's running on the server side. So you can see it's actually it runs on the initial page load, it runs on the server side, but when you actually change routes, you see here, I go back, it runs on the client side. So this isn't gonna help us if we want something to only run on the server side, like we have some secret information, but you can see that's how it works. 
And you can actually, there is a way to make it only run on the server side, but it's not, it doesn't run every time. But if you do something like process.server here, and you put this console log inside here, and you refresh it, you see here I'm refreshing it, and it's not, uh, it's still loading here. There we go. Oh, process is not defined. I think I have a typo, too many Cs. I'll reload it again. You see here it's not running on this side, but if we bring over our server side, you see every time we reload it, it runs on the server side, but it never runs on the client side again. You see here in the console at the bottom, it's not loading. So that's one way to do server side rendering, but it's not really perfect. Uh, the other way to do it in middleware is, and also by the way, one thing nice about async data is I can return a value from async data, an object, like let's say I have blah, and I can put a value in here, hi, and actually I can use that object inside here. So if I hit press me, you see here's hi. So I can return stuff from my async data. I do have access to this context, like I showed before, which has access to your query params, your query, your request objects. So you can you can see requests from the Node.js server. If Nux is using middleware, the request object might be different. So you have access to a lot of these things that this is not in, in plain vanilla Vue.js, um, but you're not really running stuff on the server. Now middleware is something you can do. So I can actually do something like this. I'm going to delete this async. Well, I'll leave, I'll just comment this out so we don't get confused. Uh, let's see here. And they're commented out. And I can add something called middleware. And we can also define this in a few other places inside the Nux config file. But let's say I wanted to create a middleware called, I don't know, we can call it Eric too. It doesn't matter. So inside this middleware here, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it Eric.js. And then inside Eric.js, I can export, let's see here, I can do something similar. I'm gonna copy and paste this from another screen just to save time. So I can, you do this export default function, you still have access to the context. And we can do things like this, where I could have done this too in async data. I'm going to do destructuring to get the app out. I also could just do something like this. Ah, that'll work the same way. But just for, just to keep it simple, I have app here. I can also do process.server here too, and then I can console log the app. So I'm going to delete this. This I'm just going to leave console log app, and if we load it, and I get an error. So blah is not set. Oh, let me go back to here. Let me delete that. Reload it. And now if you look back here on the server, you can see here now we have this huge glob of data. So this is coming from the server because it's on the initial page load. But if I go back and click it, now it's showing up in the console here and not on the server. So here's the same information in the, cons in the uh, client side. So once again, just like middleware, just like async data, it only runs on the server side on the initial page load, and then after that, it runs on the client side. So you're probably thinking that, that well, why bother um, with this? Why try to even do anything on the server side with this? Because it doesn't really work. I mean, you can use this if process.server, but it's not perfect. So the third option, and the true way you want to do server side rendering, or run server-side functions using Nux.js. I mean, like I said, by convention, by default, it'll do all the server-side rendering for you, but what happens if you truly want to write some server-side functions in here and create your own routes that are outside this Nux app? Well, that's where server middleware comes in. So Nux, like it says here, Nux internally creates a connect instance so we can register our middleware to its stack and have changes to provide more routes like API without need to an external server. So this is the nice part, and this is what's on bold, without the need of an external server. So instead of having to create an additional Node.js server somewhere, why not just use the one inside Nux.js? It's there. And it says, obviously, don't, com don't get it confused with middleware. And you can configure it in the Nux config.js file. And 
you have this neck. So you can do it two ways. You can actually create your, all your routes. You can create like external API routes inside the server middleware and then just have it rendered. Or if you want to kind of give control back, you can run next. And that invokes the next middleware. So don't forget to call next at the end if your middleware is not at the endpoint. So if you're creating endpoints, then you wouldn't want to use next if you're uh, if you are creating endpoints, if you don't create an endpoints and you just want something else to happen, then you might want to use this next. So it's pretty easy to use. So I'll, I can show you here. So what you do is you go to your Nux config file and you add in the server middleware with a colon. And then you have this. Uh, array here and then you have each object that you want to put it in here so you can do things like uh, serve certain static files um, you can do additional things like let's say we already have the Eric route so I can do path slash Eric and then I can add in a handler and we'll just call it API um, we'll call it index.js just kind of like it is in here. And then we'll have to make sure we make this an object like this. And now we can go and go, we need to create a new folder. So we'll create a new folder, call it API. Let's make sure we're, oops. We'll create a new folder, we'll call it API. And inside the API folder, we'll create a new file called index.js. And then inside of it, we can uh, we can create um, just kind of like what it's doing here. Okay, so I went in and stopped the server and restarted the server after I made this change to this index.js file. And I added the console log for rec in there. And that's for a request. And you can see here, um, here's the server. If I go to press me here and let me restart it here, the server. And I refresh this page, press me, I refresh it. You can see here I have the full object coming through here. So it's run on the server side and not never on the client side. Uh, so it's useful, but it's not perfect. So one thing we could do, which makes this even better, is let's say we wanted to have uh, use an express server to set up an API endpoint. So I'm going to go back to my Nux config file and instead of having the server middleware like this, I'm going to just do everything inside one file. So I'm going to just put it as API and we're gonna have that index.js file. We can just put an index and we need to put the JS in there make sure we have a comma at the end. And then inside here, I'm gonna delete this. Okay, let's go ahead and delete everything in the index.js file like I just did. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste just a basically a hello world express, uh, express server. So I have var express equals require express, var app express, and then I have this app.git, which has a request and response object. I'm just gonna send hello world and then I'm gonna export the module with this API here. So I'm gonna save it, and then I'm gonna stop and restart my server in the other window here. So this actually should give us a new endpoint outside the Vue.js app. So if I go slash API here, I actually got this hello world, but we're actually right now we're not inside the Vue.js app at all. This is a separate endpoint. Um, I can also uh, use something like Postman you see right here, and uh, if I hit send here, localhost 3000 API, I'm getting hello world. So I'm not even inside the Vue.js app at all right now. I'm actually created this endpoint and uh, it just works, which is really cool. So you could see, I could do a whole bunch of things here. I could do authentication, um, do all my authentication in here, or if I have some secret keys that I can't have exposed to the inside the client app, I can put them all inside here and then do calls out from the components 
into this API. So it's a it's pretty powerful. And now I don't need a whole a Node.js server. Now, of course, if you're if you're doing a lot of complicated things, you probably want to go ahead and just get an uh, an actual server, either Rails, Node, Java, something. But if you're if you have a, a really compact app, I could see you doing everything inside Nuxt and just write all your server side code inside this middleware here and have it all just run. So this is so I hope you guys like this video. Just some quick tips on differences between async data middleware and server middleware. I think Nuxt.js is really powerful for creating Vue.js apps because you have things like this built in. It's really neat, and you also get the, the power of server-side rendering on your initial page loads. So if you guys like this video, please click that like button and subscribe. And below, tell me um, how you guys do server-side rendering. What servers do you guys use? Do you guys use Node, Rails? What, what do you prefer? Let me know. Thanks.